Okay, we're going to uh, talk about drawing our uh, subject uh, to get ready for a painting. If there are a number of ways to draw out our subject, the uh, traditional way is well, like if we're going to paint this apple, we look at it and uh, we simply we draw it. Okay, so you look at your subject and and you draw it, and then and then this is drawing, and then the next thing is to see the values. And if you're painting, <clears throat> you know, we, we get into values. So we can draw it, or we can take a photograph of the uh, picture we have, have, and we can actually trace it. We put it behind our watercolor paper, and we can trace it. I'll show you how this works here. We put a light, uh, get a bright light like this, and we put a light behind our picture, and we can see here, we can see our subject uh, behind it and if we uh, so you can trace it and you, you put that on there make sure you attach your picture and then you can you know go ahead and, and trace a lot of teachers uh, discourage this and I'm gonna get some thumbs down on this video because I'm suggesting that you could trace uh, but I think tracing uh, is a good way to get people into a painting people who don't know how to draw so uh, tracing is definitely an option I'm going to turn the lights out here for a second uh, uh, as well. Let's talk about the portrait here. I painted Noel uh, last week and made a little video. Here's a photograph of her. This is the painting I did. Now she posed for me, so I posted this on, on Facebook. And yet I also took a picture of her. So I didn't trace her there. I did it the old-fashioned way. I measured. Uh, she was standing there, and so I measured the height of her head, and I went over to my paper, and I went back and forth, and I measured. And so if I'm going to work from life, uh, measuring is one way to do it, and learn how to draw, but this takes a long time. Now, we could take a picture of someone, and then we could trace it. I want to show you here how we can... Uh, I'm going to turn the lights out for a second. <clears throat> Let's turn this light on here and see what I'm going to do. And I'm turning the lights out here. So here's our spotlight. I want to show you this is a piece of Arches watercolor paper here, and I'm going to put Noel. This is Noel is underneath the watercolor paper. That if we look at the top of the paper, that's the top of the paper. Watch as I go underneath. This is 140 pound Arches, and uh, sometimes I do trace my subject if I'm in a rush or I, I'm getting a demonstration ready. So this is something I use once in a while. So keep that in mind. You can actually put your subject behind your paper like this and then you put a bright light behind it and you can t uh, tape it on there and you can trace it. Some people will project um, and uh, let me turn the lights back on here. So, again, uh, remember that we can trace. If you have a photograph of your subject, you can trace it. You can project it. There are projection systems. We could also grid it. I'm not going to get into gridding, but you, you actually draw a grid over your photograph. And, again, but what I did with this one is I did it the, the old-fashioned way. So I know how to draw things the way they look, but I also periodically will trace the subject and again, what I just showed you is you take your photograph, you take your arches paper, you put the photograph underneath the paper, and you attach it to the, pa the uh, arches paper, and then put a bright spotlight underneath it like this, and uh, put it underneath like that, and you can trace it. This is actually, if you're working from a photograph and you want to cheat, I call this cheating, whether you trace, uh, or, you know, use a grid, that's a form of cheating. Make a mark here on the edges of your photograph and then take your photograph and uh, let's say you want to, um, uh, you hold your photograph right where the marks are and hold your, hold your pencil right here and then move it away and make a line like that. And you can put it back and you actually hold your hand still, it's touching the table and you go like this and we come over here like this and put it right back, line it up with the marks here. Here's her, her chin down here. Put it right back in place here. We can go like this. Put it right here like this. We can go like this. Put it over here like this. You make a mark like that. Always putting it back right there where it goes. 
and you move it back like this, slide it back over, and <clears throat> um, we can slowly piece together uh, our our uh, painting uh, doing it doing it this way. So again, that's uh, they call it stand, slip, and slide in my classes, but this is a way of sliding. Position your paper still like that, and we slide it back and forth, make a mark, hold your pencil still, slide it back, make a mark, and you can, that's another cheater system. It's cheating, and a lot of people will get some thumbs down on it, but it can help us get accuracy if you really need to do it. But again, I know how to draw from life. I know how to draw anything, out in location, whatever. So if I use this, I only use it once in a while. And it's normally a shortcut getting ready for a demonstration. It speeds up the process, okay? So those are a couple of approaches to drawing. I want to show you here uh, this, this uh, subject I painted. This was a demonstration in the class, and I did trace part of this here. I also painted the same scene when I was on location. So I, could, I can sit down and I can paint this on location, but sometimes I'll trace... Uh, you know, put the make a photograph and put it underneath. But then, quite often, I'll change it. So if you if you trace, watch out. That's it's a very dangerous habit. And if you're an advanced student, I won't let more advanced students trace. I actually make my beginners trace uh, because they don't know how to draw, and I want to help them get into painting. This uh, this subject was painted in uh, Tuscany, in Italy. And this was painted on location, so I sat right there uh, two hours one day, two hours the next day, and I actually just sat there and I painted that. So I know how to paint a landscape by looking out there and measuring and going through the same process I did with Noel a couple of days ago. And this is my, I used my brother Greg as a model for this, as a lot of people say it as a Christ face, but he actually posed for me and this is about an hour and a half watercolor sketch that I did of my brother Greg. And in terms of flowers, uh, quite often I'll set up flowers in my studio, and this was done from life, very much like what we did with the apple. We set up real flowers, so I know how to work from life. And <clears throat> this is also a live model. I mean, she posed for this, so I measured. And on this one, I may not have even done a drawing. I might have gone right into the uh, thing. And on this one here, I used a black and white photograph and I made up the color, uh, but I did, I did trace the basic pattern because it was a demonstration, uh, and, um, and this has been a very popular painting. But part of it was traced and part of it was made up. And then like this one here, this portrait of this Native American, uh, this was uh, used, I actually looked at my face, used a mirror, and used some of my eyes and my own features, and I made up a lot of the background and I didn't do any tracing on this at all. So this is probably three-fourths of this is just imagination. So keep that in mind when we're gonna we're gonna uh, draw something out. We want to paint if I want to paint this guy here I can just try to draw it or I can put uh, this underneath and try to trace him. If I want to paint the apple I can just try to draw it out and paint it the way you're supposed to do it. And a lot of teachers that's the only way they let you do it or you can make a photograph of it and put it underneath your watercolor uh, and trace it. So there's, uh, that's a couple of options for you. Use a live model, actually paint from still life, and don't permit your students to trace, or you can permit your students to trace, or you can also grid a number of other approaches to getting your drawing finished so it's accurate, so you can end up with a more accurate painting. That's it for today.